Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Camel. More excitingly, however, welcome back to Starfield. This is sponsored by Bethesda, who have asked me to create a lore video that will fully prepare you for Starfield's upcoming House Varun based DLC, Shattered Space which will be available here in Australia on the 1st of October, which equates to the 30th of September in the US. Now, I have not played Shattered Space, so I don't know anything beyond what is already publicly available, so there will be no spoilers here. However, despite all of this information being out there already, piecing together fragments of obscure Varun lore from here, there and everywhere can be difficult, so I'm here to help and lead you to the Great Serpent. Now, if you are into strange hidden things, be sure to check out my other Starfield videos via the link down in the description. I think you'll really enjoy them. But for right now, without further hiss-itation, strap in as we explore the lore of House Varun so that you are fully prepared for what is to come in Shattered Space. While Starfield offers a handful of varied factions, the mysteries of House Varun caught my attention like no other. And as someone blessed with ADHD catching my attention, well that's quite impressive. Luckily, Shattered Space is entirely focused on this faction, and I cannot wait to deep dive into House Varun and explore their culture, politics, and religion, which all seem to be one and the same, rendering them a theocracy, which is always interesting in science fiction. But before we touch on what is in store for us in Starfield's first major DLC, Shattered Space, you might be asking, or oh, just wondering, House Varun, who exactly are they? Sure, we've heard the name murmured here and there, now and then, maybe run into some zealots screaming something about a snake. But overall, House Varun remains entirely elusive and secretive even when one actively tries to sink their fangs into the intricacies of their culture or even just unearth any information about them at all, we always come up hungry, like trying to catch a shadow. So what do we actually know of House Varun? Well, we can trace the origins of the faction all the way back to the year 2190, 140 years before the game of Starfield takes place. When a colony ship called the Archimedes departed the United Colonies from New Atlantis to explore and colonize distant stars. However, on its final grab jump from Mars into deep space, the Archimedes disappeared. One year later, in 2191, the Archimedes mysteriously reappeared in the uncharted Kavnik star system. This is actually very strange, as grav jumping should take no time at all. Seconds, minutes perhaps, but a whole year? Hmm. Something well beyond the everyday has occurred, and to make an already abstruse occurrence more esoteric, one of the passengers of the colony ship, Archimedes, a man named Jinan Varun, claims to have communicated with a celestial entity during this grav jump an entity that he would later name the Great Serpent. Which is pretty weird, but to add strange to odd, the other passengers of the Archimedes reported that the grav jump was completed in mere seconds, when in fact the grav jump itself took roughly one year, and Jinan Varun states that he spent an eternity with the Great Serpent over the course of this grav jump during which time the Great Serpent apparently commanded Jinan Varun to begin preparing for the Shrouding, an event in which the Great Serpent will encircle the universe, an end times, so to speak, a rapture. Divine prophecy or delusions of a madman who can say, regardless of the truth of it, this new perceived self-purpose of Jinan Varun led to some drastic action, as the Colonial Council the original appointed ruling body of the colony ship Archimedes stepped aside as Jinan Varun asserted himself as a divine leader, proclaiming a mandate that the colonists should follow him or face annihilation when the Great Serpent enshrouds the universe. Amazingly, this seemingly outlandish decree functioned successfully and managed to garner Jinan Varun a devoted following of scalies, I mean devotees 
With this newfound purpose, colonization of the moon Kavnik 1b commenced immediately, with Jinan Varun superseding the colonial council who now worked under him. The capital city was formed and named Dazra, and in gratitude of their leader, their new home, the moon Kavnik 1b, was blessed with a new name, Varun Kai. Six years later, in 2197, the now secondary Kavnik Colonial Council was entirely dissolved, transferring complete control and authority to Jinan Varun where under his rule, Varun culture quickly began to grow into a unique and structured civilization, with great and minor noble houses forming, such as House Malin and Kardik. Soon after, by the year 2200, any and all separation of church and state had been abolished within House Varun, as all citizens were requisitioned to worship the Great Serpent. In the following years, Jinan Varun ordered a series of highly radical grab drive experiments in a holy quest aimed at reaching the Great Serpent once more. Many members of House Varun warned against such arcane and theoretical endeavors, as at the time House Varun was experiencing declining resources, and as a more immediate threat, the results of such uncharted experimentation could be devastating. The outcomes of these gravitational drive divination ritual experiments remain undisclosed. Now sometime later in the year 2230, four decades after the mysterious disappearance and reappearance of the Archimedes colony ship, the time had come for the hibernating isolationist viper-headed house to reveal itself to the settled systems. As into the Volai system, from the stars emerged the now heavily modified Archimedes colony ship, serving as House Varun's flagship, and bearing a new, more funebrial designation, Mourning. And not the sunrise kind of mourning, but the remembering of the dead kind of mourning. Despite the grim undertones of this first impression, the enigmatic House Varun came in peace and claimed its only objective was to spread their religion and worship of the Great Serpent. The major factions and corporations of the settled systems agreed to diplomatic relations. However, during this time, House Varun had clandestine objectives, as they secretly amassed ships, followers, weapons, armaments, and intelligence in preparation for their next play, which came 10 years later in 2240, when House Varun forces declared all-out war on the rest of human civilization, initiating a war that came to be called the Serpent's Crusade, a conflict that would not be short-lived. In 2263, after the destruction of the United Colony Star Station The Den, along with thousands of Freestar, United Colonies, and Independent Souls killed in the venomous 23-year-long Serpent's Crusade, the founder of House Varun, Jinan Varun, died. With his death and the succession of his heir, Jarek Varun, House Varun finally sued for peace. To this day, however, there remains Varun zealots who do not recognize this cessation of hostilities their leaders established. In the devastating wake of the Serpent's Crusade, House Varun's new leader, Jarek Varun, sought to assure the survival of his people through diplomacy. To affirm his intentions, a House Varun embassy was established in New Atlantis. Despite Jarek's goodwill, the Serpent's Crusade left many within the settled systems distrustful of House Varun. Tensions were constantly restrung as rogue Varun zealots continued to strike helpless settlements, seeing all as their enemy. Following the Serpent's Crusade back on their homeworld, or home moon if we want to get technical, Varun Kai, the body of the recently deceased founder of House Varun, Jinan Varun, was interred within the Scaled Citadel, a fortification that serves as the seat of House Varun's leadership. Seven years later, in 2270, Jarek Varun's twin brother Janda publicly challenged him in opposition of House Varun's isolationist policy. This discord between brothers increased tensions between House Varun and House Malin, one of the other noble houses of the Great Serpent. Four years later, in 2274, House Malin formally severed ties with House Varun. 
a disruption that gave rise to Varun zealots who continued to spread fear and anxiety across the settled systems. 24 years later, in 2298, the diplomatic leader of House Varun, Jarek Varun, passed away and was succeeded by his son Anasko Varun, who took up the mantle of Speaker for the Great Serpent. Four years later, in 2302, seeming to take inspiration from his grandfather Janin, Anasko Varun initialized a covert research program focused on grab drive technology. Utilizing methods and employing approaches that were, and still are, considered unorthodox. The results of this research is currently undisclosed, but we will be hearing about them again very soon. Later in 2311, just 19 years before the game of Starfield takes place, the three year long colony war, a conflict between the UC and the Freestar Collective, ended. Both sides ratified a treaty known as the Armistice, agreeing to the outlaw of mech warfare and Xeno weapons. All related research would be locked away in the Armistice archive in the city of New Atlantis on Jemison. Now, despite not being involved in the war, House Varun signed this Armistice as a third neutral signatory. But then, rather strangely and seemingly unrelated, Shortly after the armistice was signed between the UC and Freestar Collective, House Varun retreated into seclusion without warning. To this day, no one knows why. This decision also included complete communication blackout and the abandoning of their embassy within New Atlantis, although Ambassador Kazrik Balmore chose to remain behind, believing that securing and maintaining peace on behalf of House Varun to be his true duty. And that lands us into the current timeline of Starfield, 2330. Even now, House Varun is absent across the settled systems, with most encounters being with fringe zealot extremists who have slithered out of their sabled pits to scavenge and cleanse the galaxy of what they deem to be heretics. Although within the settled systems slinking under the radar of most, there are in fact a small occult selection of Varun spies keeping tabs on the other factions, along with watching excommunicated members and various disavowed heretics. In fact, everyone's favorite waifu, Andresia, was originally sent to infiltrate and spy on Constellation for House Varun. Although Sarah Morgan's good mum energy instilled a change of heart within this previously sneaky snake, Andresia. And now we reach the events of Shattered Space. Again, while I haven't played Shattered Space, Bethesda has released some introductory information on the DLC publicly, as a Varun star station called the Oracle appears within the settled systems broadcasting a distress call. Something has gone horribly wrong on Varun Kai. A secretive experiment involving grav drive technology went terribly wrong, which resulted in a massive tear in the fabric of space and time, and shattered a significant portion of the Varun capital, Dazra. We arrived to Varun Kai just a few weeks after this incident, so the ramifications of the disaster are still very fresh, as not only are the citizens reeling in response, but so too is the city. There is a huge crater within the Varun conurbation. People are missing as families search for loved ones. Nothing has been reconstructed. Along with this, the scaled citadel, the Varun seat of power and governance, is now trapped within a field of strange energy. And to add confusion to delusion, the current Varun leader and speaker for the Great Serpent, Anasko Varun, has gone missing. In his absence, the minor houses that make up House Varun are all vying for control over the future of the faction. So it seems that we will be stepping right into the middle of a bubbling cauldron of varied viper venoms all trying to outpoison the others. But along with this, the Shattered Space DLC takes place entirely on Varun Kai. Because of this, we can expect a much more detailed and handcrafted experience, akin to what we've seen with previous Bethesda titles and their DLCs. So we will be able to explore and soak in the Varun culture fully, along with their home and all of its strange creatures, landscapes and occurrences. 
which you know me, I'm very much looking forward to. So, now that you were caught up to speed with the setting for Starfield's Shattered Space DLC and the known lore behind the mysterious faction House Varun, I would love to hear what you are looking forward to within Shattered Space, which is releasing on the 1st of October here in Australia and the 30th of September in the US. Do you think you'll be helping House Varun or hindering them, cutting the head off the serpent? Anywho, I've been Camel. I would like to thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Bethesda for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out my social media down below and subscribe for more Starfield content. And with that, I will see you in the next video. I'll see you there soon.